And with just over 80 days until Election Day, campaigns are now fully underway, and so are sales of campaign merchandise. One campaign slogan that's gone viral as merchandise comes from a cartoon created by Mike Lukovich. There you're seeing him, the editorial cartoonist at the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, and I should mention two-time Pulitzer Award winner. Mike, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. It's good to see you again. I want to begin by asking you, the past three-plus years have clearly been great for you, enough to get material for a book uh, that just, well, I guess, went out some time ago. But uh, your right. thoughts on this past three-plus years? Okay, well, you know, Sean, when I describing this, I always tell, tell people it's like uh, being married to a nymphomaniac. <laughs> it's, it's fun at first. And then you're thinking, oh, please, just stop. You know, Trump is like a fire hose of craziness constantly. And so it's hard. It's actually it's actually harder uh, to be a cartoonist or a satirist right now than it is uh, with with previous previous presidents, because when, when when you know, Trump is just absurd all the time. So it's hard to top that with a cartoon. So it's 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 been a challenging uh, three plus years. And the book is a very stable genius or a stable genius. Um, you did yes, not expect that, yeah. Trump to win. Uh, in fact, on election night, you had a cartoon already in the can. You went home yeah. early, then boom. Tell us about that. Yeah, you know, I I I I drawn a cartoon of it looked like Hillary was going to win, and early the early returns, and uh, so I did a cartoon of her her breaking the glass ceiling. I can't remember exactly what I did, but. Around uh, around 9:40, 9:50, 10 o'clock, I told my wife. I said, "Oh crap! I I think things things are going south here." So I had to uh, uh, run to the uh, to the paper and and do another do another cartoon on that. And yeah, we see the cartoon there. So you see a Trump tweet: uh, "Amazing antique ceiling demolished by crooked Hillary." Bad, bad. This is the kind of stuff yeah, we're yeah. used to hearing. Uh, what's it like getting instant feedback now with your satire cartoons hitting social social media instantly and you actually turned a play on Biden's last name into something that has really gone viral yeah yeah okay so first of all you know with the newspaper uh, you know years ago I've been doing this for a long time I've been at the AJC the Atlanta Journal Constitution uh, for over 30 years and so I used to do a cartoon and then you know it would run it would run the next morning in the newspaper and then I wouldn't really find out the, the, the response to it until, you know, maybe a few days later when people would send letters to the editor that would be printed. So now when I do a cartoon, it immediately, I, I immediately put it on AJC.com. I also put it on Twitter and also on Facebook. So I immediately start getting responses. And, and I, I love that. Even when the responses aren't good, even when people criticize me, mm -hmm. I feel like I feel like at least you know they're paying attention. So I really like that. So so I I done a cartoon uh, right after uh, what what was it the oh uh, Super Tuesday right I done a cartoon after Super Tuesday where, where uh, uh, Biden looked like he was on the way to winning the nomination by then. So I woke up in the middle of the night. It was around 3 a.m. and I started thinking about thinking about things. And I and I started thinking about Biden. And then I and then it sort of switched to by dawn, B Y E D O N, by dawn. And so I thought, oh crap, I have to do this cartoon quickly because someone else is going to come up with it. So I got up early in the morning, I drew it, I had it done early, I sent it out, and it ran and got went on social media. And then uh, very quickly I started getting people interested in wanting to uh, reprint the car, uh, reprint it in on. Uh, on uh, uh, bumper stickers sure. and on yard signs. So now if people go to bydon.store, B-Y-E-D-O-N.store, <laughs> you can get all these all this kind of cool merchandise that says Bydon uh, 2020 on it. You know, lawmakers may take issue with what you're doing, I guess, at times, but you also have a chance to rub elbows and get to know these guys. And you've created relationships with some, and, 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 and John Lewis, the civil rights oh. giant, uh, late yeah. congressman, is one. Tell us about that. Oh man, well you know, I, I try to avoid uh, relationships with politicians mainly because I don't like too many of them. But John Lewis was an exception. He was such, a, you know, he was such a hero and and an icon and a legend. But he was also this sweet, gentle, friendly guy, kind of a shy guy. And 
and so you know I, I got to know him over the years and I, I did some drawings for him and so when I would see him at an event or something you know he would see me and he'd get a big smile on his face yeah. and it was just it was so heartwarming to, to know that this guy liked me and that and that I, so one day a couple of years ago I was I, I, I was working on a cartoon and I went and I got the mail at the paper and it was a it was a box from uh, from Representative Lewis, and this was just out of the blue. So I opened it up, and it was it was the American flag, and it was the American flag that you know it, it had flown over the over the U.S. Capitol. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, and it and and so he he gave it to me and and and, and sent it to me, and it was just just a sweet thing. One other little story about him, I uh, I know a good friend of his, and he told me that that John Lewis had like twenty two cats that lived under his porch and he and and john lewis would feed those cats and kept you know just took care of them that was just a that was just how he was he was yeah. just so sweet and loving i i mean i i he's just a wonderful human being and i i miss him